I'm Mark Lack, this is Business Rockstars. We're here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. Jim Schlexer is in the house. He's the CEO of the Inc. CEO Project. Pleasure to have you on the show with us. Thanks, Mark, glad to be here. So dive into your, uh, your business for us. What do you guys do, the yeah, Inc. CEO Project? Inc. CEO Project uh, coaches entrepreneurs. So we find entrepreneurs that are trying to grow their business, and it turns out that there are these known transitions that you go through as you grow your business. Yeah. You know, first executive team, <laughs> then the team I hired isn't the team that's gonna get me to the next level, so I yeah. gotta get rid of some of them. But there's about 10 or 12 known transitions that you go through, and we help work CEOs through each of those transitions. Uh, we okay. call them points of constraint. Uh, we work with about 100 CEOs around the country, all entrepreneurs, all growth oriented, and we engage them with one-on-one -on -one coaching okay. and CEO peer groups, sort of like mastermind groups from Napoleon Hill. Awesome. We were just talking about Napoleon. We were, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And outwitting the devil was the one. Outwitting the said. devil. A little shout out to Napoleon Hill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's talk to specifically the small business owners that are maybe just getting started. Maybe they're doing under $10 million. Right. What are the transitions that they need to make to get to that next level, knowing the stage that they're at? Yep, so number one would be getting stuck in a role. So everybody starts the company and they're great at something, like they're a sales guy, they're an engineer, they're whatever they happen to be awesome at, and you end up having to do that job to grow the business. Mm -hmm. The problem is once you get to a certain scale, you need to move out of what you're incredibly great at and become the CEO. Yeah. And 10 to $20 million is right about when it happens. Yeah. The problem is it's super rewarding personally, to do the thing that I'm great at. So if I'm a salesperson and I go out and get that order, it means a lot of juice that you get from that. Yeah. And you go, well, I'm gonna go do the CEO thing. And to be honest, I'm not completely certain what it is I do as a CEO, but a salesperson, that I got wired. So they get stuck in an individual role. And you'd say, well, what's so wrong about that? And the question we ask is, so while you're being a great salesperson, who's being the CEO? Mm. The answer is nobody. And that's the problem. You, you have an organization without a head if you don't roll up into that position and move <clears throat> other people in, underneath you. It just reminded me of uh, a video I literally just watched yesterday, and that was two Navy SEALs. Yep. And the Navy SEALs were doing an example, I'll shorten it. They had these boats, and they yep. do these crazy races yeah. and trainings. These guys are nuts. <laughs> and the boat that kept coming in last and the boat that kept coming in first, they just wanted to try something. Huh. They took the leader of the winning boat and the leader of the losing boat, and they swapped them. Yep. And then in the next race, the winner became the loser, and the loser Isn't became the that winner. Something. And they said it was all because of the leader. It had nothing to do with the team. I think it was a perfect relation there between business, right? If yep. you don't have a great leader and you're out being the sales guy, how's the team gonna win? And, and the answer is it won't. It I mean, won't. You won't get out of dodge. <laughs> Absolutely right. Yeah. Absolutely right. But it happens all the time. I'd say the next transition is. I'm gonna hire that first really big gun person onto my yeah. team. You know, um, maybe it's a COO, maybe it's a CFO, depends on the, or maybe a, a VP sales to oh, take myself out of that position. Mm. Those are really hard jobs to hire. Yeah. And you know, a lot of people go to their college roommate or a buddy, <laughs> right? No, tell you, yeah. whoever, everybody on in the air, put your hand in the air if you hired yeah, your college yeah. roommate. Everybody does it. And they'll mm. usually get you to a certain per point, but the problem is, is people run out of gas. I find people that I like, but they don't necessarily have the skills. I'm comfortable, but I didn't push myself out of that comfort zone and find somebody who's really gonna aggressively move the company where it needs to go. That's a classic sort of transition point. You get it right, yeah. you get to grow, you get it wrong, you go, you Well, let's right talk down. about what's your role in your company, since we're talking about who does what and yep. how to get to the next level. What's your role? Yep, uh, so I'm the CEO of the Inc. CEO Project. Um, my but like, what do you do? Because yeah. we both know CEO, especially I'm there. depending on the company, it's like, what is, so what is it? I work on, yeah, I work on kind of three things. Um, I work on the business model, so how we make money, who we sell to, uh, those sort of yeah. things. I work on the talent we have around the business, the caliber of the people, the training that they've got, and then the systems and processes we use to run the business. Okay. Um, I still end up being a little bit in the business because it's still a little small, but I c I've got a pathway that as we grow, I'll move out of that and I won't be doing any daily operations anymore. Okay. But the same things apply no matter what your size is, business model, talent, and processes and systems, those are the three things you gotta spend your time on as a CEO. Okay. Doesn't change from small to big. Totally agree with that. So what did you do before this that led you into this? Were yeah. you also in the business coaching space for a while there? No, brand new for me. Um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I ran companies for other people. So okay. I was a hired gun, uh, yeah. ran a bunch of different firms, made a lot of people money. But I always had that bug, that entrepreneurial spirit. And I was involved in a mastermind group like this for years, and I found a yeah. lot of value in it. And so I love the business model, and I said, you know, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Um, and jumped off the corporate kind of thing and opened up my own business about 12 years ago, and I've been doing that ever since, and it's a perfect fit. 
Biggest mistake you've made so far in business. <laughs> there could be a lot. Doesn't yeah, have to be wow. Do, how long one is the segment? <laughs> <laughs> one of one of my biggest, biggest mistakes. mistakes. But more um, importantly, the lesson. Yeah, I, I had a guy that worked for me um, a long time ago, and it turns out he was a pathological liar. Mm. And uh, I did not move fast enough to move him out of my organization. And, you know, shame on me for not figuring it out, but he was yeah. devilish in terms of how he... All the stories made sense, but then when you got underneath it and peeled the onion, there were no results, there were no mm -hmm. impact. Very dangerous guy. And I finally got rid of him, but it took me forever to do it. So that happens a lot in business, unfortunately, yeah. in different ways and shapes and forms, right? But the lesson from that for you moving forward, what was it? You know, I, it was a sales guy selling to another sell, sales guy. And yeah. I probably needed other people who were much more critical and okay. weren't subject to being sold, because sales guys love to buy. Mm -hmm. We love to buy. So it's easy to sell us. Yeah. Uh, you need to find somebody who's grumpy and different and isn't gonna listen to it and won't believe it, and you gotta prove it, and they might have you, called You need the super skeptical person. I need that person <laughs> on my team, I do. I need, and that's how you make a good team. You have people that are very different to you. Yeah, yeah. Go back to our point of hiring your college roommate who you're comfortable with, he's too much like you. Yeah. You wanna find somebody who's not like you, doesn't make you comfortable, you're not gonna invite him to Christmas dinner, <laughs> but that's who you need on your team. And I needed that person, that was kind of the mistake. What do you feel like in the present day with the shift in culture and everything going on, what do you feel are some of the important values companies need to start adopting? Or they maybe already have them, but they don't make it a spotlight and literally make it something that the company stands by. Every employee, if you ask them, knows it. Yeah. I'll give you two things. One on a business side. I think um, integrity. You know, we just get beat up as business guys all the time. You know, you look at what Hollywood, Hollywood does. Yeah. We get beat up as unethical people. And I got to tell you, if you're going to build a career, you can't be unethical. You have to play it straight, do what you say, deliver all the time without yeah. regard to contracts. So that's sort of one on a personal level for anybody who's listening. On an organizational level, we're big on building a purpose into your organization. And I think a lot of organizations miss this, that they don't have purpose. There's a great book by Daniel Pink, uh, which is called Drive, and it talks about autonomy, purpose, and mastery as the yeah. intrinsic motivators for people, particularly millennials. And if you don't have purpose in your organization, think Tom's shoes, right? We, mm -hmm. You buy one, we give one away. If you don't have that in your organization, you're not gonna be able to recruit the talent you want. And for me, you know, we go to the beginning of the year, we say, what are we gonna get done? We're gonna sell more than we sold last year. I'm like, man, that's soulless. It's just yeah. hollow. So having purpose built in, integrated with your business in a unified way, I think that's where, we're, if you don't have it, you need to do it. Not just because it's good business, but it's also gonna help you recruit the talent you need to go forward. I think that if you could sit down and get the aha moments from Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, Oprah Winfrey, Tony Robbins, any of the mentors and business people that you look up to that are super successful, if you could get their aha moments and yeah. collect them, the things that cost them or made them millions and billions, that'd be pretty valuable. Just gotta read some books. <laughs> <laughs> so what's one of the aha moments from you? Yeah, this one, um, you've gotta, to be successful, you have to do things when everybody else isn't doing them. Mm. And that sounds really basic, but you go to the airport, when other people aren't going to the airport. You invest in a company when everybody thinks it's going away. You go into a market when people tell you it's a bad idea. If you go in when everybody says, that's a great idea, you're just gonna follow the herd. Mm -hmm. You're gonna, uh, so if you wanna sort of break away and have a, a unique life and have a different experience, you gotta do things when everybody else isn't doing it. That's not the safe answer. Mm. It feels really uncomfortable, but if you're doing things when everybody else is, you'll never have unique success. We'll be right back with Jim Schlexer. This is Business Rockstars. I'm Mark Lack, connecting a community of entrepreneurs. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and online at businessrockstars.com. I'm Mark Lack, this is Business Rockstars. We're here to inspire, inform, and connect a community of entrepreneurs. Jim Schlexer is joining us. He's the CEO of the Inc. CEO Project. Recap for us about your company and then we'll dive into your book. Uh, yeah, we do uh, CEO coaching for entrepreneurs. Uh, we do one-on-one -on -one coaching and we do mastermind groups. Mm -hmm. uh, anybody who, any industry, and we try to help them work through the points of constraint that are stopping them from growing. Fantastic, we're both in the coaching space, yep. we just do it in slightly different ways. Yep. You're also the author of Great CEOs Are Lazy. I am. Love the title of the that, book. <laughs> right. So I read this book, what are some of the key takeaways I'm gonna get? Yeah, this is based on some work by a Israeli physicist by the name of Eli Goldratt. He wrote yeah. a book called The Goal. 
And the idea is in anything you can name, there's a point of constraint. Think about it like a garden hose. There's a kink in the hose, yeah. and I want water. Only place that work helps is at the kink. It turns out that a lot of CEOs don't even get that. So mm -hmm. they work all over the hose trying to hope they're gonna open up the flow rate, and they forget that there's really only one place that matters, <laughs> it's the kink. Well, yeah. the lazy CEOs that are great, they go, first thing is, let's figure out where the kink is in my business. Yeah. Then I'm gonna go work on the point of, uh, point of constraint, which is the kink. So the book yeah. really talks about how do you figure out where the kink is in the hose, okay. how do you open up the kink, and get your business flowing again so you can grow. Do you reference any lazy CEOs in here? Yeah, some, of the great some ones not out there. by name, but yeah, yeah. Some, uh, <laughs> some by name. Actually, one of the great ones is Bill Gates has a great quote along those lines, which is, wow. if I want a hard job to be done, I'll give it to a lazy person because mm -hmm. they're gonna find an easy way to do it. There was a, I can't remember, so I'm butchering it, so I won't even try to go into it in detail, but there was something about like four people to lead your army, and it was from like the Book of War or something like okay. that. It was like if there was four people that you could choose to lead your army, I don't even remember all of them, but it was like I would choose the lazy one yep. because he'd find a way to like, win the war in the fastest, easiest, less costful way possible. Yep, okay, um, so Bill, Bill Gates stole it from him then. <laughs> something like that. But uh, I love that concept because yeah. I think we've been so conditioned from teachers, parents, society to think that you have to work hard. Yeah. If you work hard, you can make it happen. But I can guarantee Bill Gates didn't make $50 billion by working hard, because trust me, I bet I can find millions of people that do manual labor every day that work harder than he does. Absolutely. Do you have an example of yourself of how you've been a lazy CEO? Yeah. Um, I end up getting involved in a lot of charity, charitable work, and my gift is to bring people to the table, organize the work, um, and uh, there was one project I was involved in where there were 20, 30 people around the table, big complicated, we were running a golf tournament for charity. And we had the meeting, at the end of the meeting, somebody goes, I was, hey, Mark, can you take care of this? Joe, can you take care of this? And at the end of the, uh, the meeting, everybody felt inspired, and turned on, they knew where they were going, and somebody commented that, Jim, you don't actually have anything to do. And my answer was, well, you just saw me do what I do, <laughs> which is get everybody else engaged. So those people are the ones that I see constantly still wearing a lot of the hats, yep. not necessarily doing a good enough job at delegating, putting the systems in place to remove themselves. Why do you think that is? Um, we have a rule for it, we call it the 70% rule. Mm -hmm. um, and so, th and the reason is they don't trust people. So if you can find somebody who's 70% as good as you are at the job, mm -hmm. delegate it, and then back out and let them do the job. The other rule is sort of a 20% a rule, which is if they've got the answer about 80% right, you could coach them up that last 20%, but you know what you do by coaching them up? They lose ownership. And so it's more important to have somebody who is 80% on point with 100% ownership than somebody who is 100% on point and they're now about 20% ownership. The Inc. CEO Project, and that's your company, and the book, The Great, you know, great CEOs Are Lazy, it's all about CEOs, so I'm curious, you obviously have, in your perspective, an idea of what makes a great CEO. Yep. So I think at the end of the day, the thing that really separates great CEOs is a lot of things, but it's mindset. The mm -hmm. mindset of a certain person, as we talked about leaders, right, is this thing that's going to separate them from having a great company because they're the leader yep. versus another CEO may have all the strategies and tactics, may be very smart. They just may not have the mindset of being a great leader. Right. What are some of the other ingredients in DNA that make a great CEO? Yeah, I think there's a, um, and entrepreneurs really express it. And we work with both hired guns and entrepreneurs. And the entrepreneurs come to the table with all things are possible. We can do this. It doesn't matter. We don't have the resources. We're going to get it done. Yeah, resourceful. It's, a, it's an amazing skill. <laughs> it's so valuable. The, the hired guns that we have in our CEO yeah. peer groups go, whoa, 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 cowboy. Let's just think this one through a little bit. And I actually think sort of right about in the middle, with there's maybe a skew towards that entrepreneurial enthusiasm, mm. is where you want to be. So that sort of positive can do, there's nothing that's going to stop me, that's really powerful because if the CEO doesn't have that, and the organization, and, and they're sort of an introspective down. You know, that's the tone of the organization. And so you don't want a positive, forward-looking organization that thinks all things are possible. That's the kind of leader you gotta have. So leader sets the tone, and if you, so you gotta think about the tone you're setting yeah. in your organization. Is it the one you wanna express? So once in a while we run into a CEO and go, you know, my guys aren't that motivated, and they're not engaged. But yet, he or she isn't engaged either. That's the thing. You're not motivated. And I got trend. a reason why. I know why. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It's That's a, funny. They, have, a, they set the pace. We also, before the cameras were rolling, we were talking about how you help bring CEOs together yeah. that are in peer groups so they can relate to each other and talk about the problems. Talk more about that because I think that nowadays people crave connection. A lot yeah. of people just get it from their phones, as we were laughing about. But CEOs, 
they need to find the peer groups. They can't get it, like we said, from their family, nope. most of their friends. Right. You know, in some cases, the board members aren't the right people. So how That's do right. you find the great CEOs at your level going through the same problems that can also help you. Yep. Break that down for us. You guys create that environment. Yeah, so it's a profoundly lo late, uh, lonely job being a CEO yeah. because like you said, you can't, you can't go to the people that work for you. You can't go to your spouse yeah. many times. And if you go to your board, that's if you have one, yeah. it's not a no consequence environment. Yeah. You can't show up and say, ladies and gentlemen, I got no idea what to do. And you're like, <laughs> well, why, why are we here? <laughs> exactly. Um, why are you in the job? <laughs> but you could go to a peer group in a trusted environment of like size, like complexity companies and say, hey, I'm really struggling with this. I'm going to get naked and tell you where I'm at. And yeah. I'm looking for help. And that's what we provide for them. Metaphorically like, naked. Uh, yeah, metaphorically <laughs> naked. We don't what do kind that. of stuff are you doing? Yeah. Here? No, yeah. no, no, none of that. Um, and, and everybody else is going to do the same. So what they're counting on you to do is give them direct feedback, on point, no agenda, no politics, just it is what it is. Yeah. And then the other thing that's very hard to get is, particularly when you have a privately held company, is hold yourself accountable to move the ball forward every quarter. A good peer group of like-sized companies will do that for you. They'll go, hey, Mark, you know, you said you're going to have this done last quarter, and it isn't done. What gives? And they're not yeah. playing I gotcha. They're just trying to help you move your move your game where you need to be. And it's different when it comes from a peer. Totally. It's way different when it comes from a peer because you can't have somebody who you would perceive as lowered on the totem pole from you doing that. It doesn't count as much. It doesn't really count as much. Yeah, and we're, we're very clear about we put <laughs> the same size company. So if you're a $100 million company, we mm -hmm. put you with other $100 million companies. And that's actually really hard to find. Mm -hmm. um, you can find mixed sort of groups, but then you said a little $2 million company giving you advice it's hard to take it seriously sometimes. Yeah. They're in a different place in life. So what are the you know, processes for selling? I feel like we, we all kind of, yep. in, in some way, understand the exchange selling is the, one of the ways that we do that. But you're doing it at the level where you're getting $100 million CEOs to come on. You're getting yep. $10 million and probably above. So my question is, what does that look like? How do you find them? Yep. How do you sell them? How do they get engaged? What are common objections? A lot of questions, but just kind of like, yeah. what's that process look uh, like? Okay. Um, Funny enough, we are big content marketers, um, and mm. so we put a lot of content out there, out there about how to be a good CEO, what the issues are. We, we both uh, put that in columns, blogs. We also push it to a bunch of CEOs, and then we look for who's interested and who's engaging in the content. Mm. Then we reach out with them with a phone call, okay. and then they speak to somebody like myself. And there's a, a fairly in-depth screening process to determine if somebody's appropriate, because part of our product is the quality of the members around that of table. Course. And so we put a turkey at the table, it's bad, and yeah. so we want to have the right kind of people at the table. So that's part of the unique value proposition yes. and everything like that. You probably have, them, like us, fill out very lengthy qualification forms and hop through those. Um, we do that on we for CEOs. We try to make it easy. We do it verbally. We just yeah, yeah. talk to them for 30, 40 minutes, there and we go. know pretty quickly. The qualifications over the phone. You got it. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And you know, we talked about what a good and a bad CEO, the lazy one. That's mm. part of where this idea came from. <laughs> I would ask how many hours a week you're working, and I've mm. talked to thousands of CEOs. If the answer was 80 hours a week, I go. I got a bad CEO on the other end of this line. Mm -hmm. If they can't control their time and get it down to 50, 60 hours a week, which is about normal in a scaled organization, yeah. they're out of con their time is out of control, they don't have the right people around them, and they don't see it yet. Yeah, they're probably being reactive for most totally. of those hours totally. instead of being a proactive CEO. Yeah. So funny, content marketing and, and then one-on-one -on -one selling at the end because it's a very high-trust relationship, of course. so it has to be one-on-one. -on -one. I'm just shocked that you said content marketing because yeah. that's definitely one of the trends happening right now totally. is creating inbound requests through putting out so much content, being perceived as the trusted expert authority and source for, in your case, stuff about CEOs. Yep, absolutely. You know, what's going on in the mindset of a CEO, and you guys are clearly one of the trusted sources for that. What do you feel like for the beginning entrepreneur, though, because I don't want a lot of this to be going over people's head being like, yeah. I'm not that CEO, <laughs> like this guy's awesome, but I'm, I'm trying to get there. Yep. For the people that are still you know, first, second, third year entrepreneurs, the people that yep. are gonna cut the cord from the nine to five job and become a first year entrepreneur and business owner, yep. what's your advice for those people? Yeah, um, rule number one of being an entrepreneur is don't run out of cash. The number one reason why companies go out of business, in fact, I'd say the reason is they run out of cash. Cash it's not flow management. <laughs> totally. So, yeah. and most people start undercapitalized. So mm -hmm. it's not about the P&L, it's, it's about how much cash you got in the bank, how much is coming in, how much is going out. I mean, you mm -hmm. can do it with a shoebox. So that's number one, don't run out of money. Um, and I think the second one is don't get wedded to your idea. If it ain't working, change it. So fail fast, try a few things. You're in this sort of exploring to try to find something that has that a vein I can run in. Mm. So you've, I, and I've seen a lot of early stage entrepreneurs that think they have a brilliant idea, they've solved the, it all, and they just can't walk away from it when it's not working. 
And the yeah. good ones go, that isn't working, let's try something different. So be flexible and try a couple of different things. Don't run out of cash and be flexible. So my question then on the be flexible part is, I do see that as well, yeah. right? People are struggling with that. But the question is, how do you know when this isn't working because we thought there was going to be demand yep. or there's going to be a certain amount of demand and there's clearly not versus this isn't working because of us. This isn't working yep. because of me. This isn't working because we don't have our message to market match, our product to consumer match. How do you know the difference between it's time to walk away because of factors that we can't control, timing, right. the marketplace, things like that, versus it's time to walk away. <laughs> yeah. Or I don't know if it's time to walk away because maybe it's my fault, maybe yeah. it's the marketing's fault. Yeah, and that's where we all go. I must yeah. be doing something wrong, so let me work till I figure it out. Yeah. You know, I'll give you two It's a tough question to answer, it really so I don't, I don't mean to put you on the spot. It, it, for me, it's a feeling thing, and this, for a guy with all, you know, an engineer, yeah. and a, it's a feeling thing. If it feels really, really hard to get a client, hmm. you probably got a problem. And, and if there's no passion. Well, your per, a personal passion? Personal. Yeah, and if I can't like the client up. Like if I feel like this is like, ugh, I'm oh, grinding. Then right? you're in the wrong place. Okay, yeah. <laughs> totally, and that's what I mean by it feels hard. I go into it and I'm like, damn, I'm gonna have to work so hard. Yeah. Maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. You're in the wrong place. If you're in the right place, it's, it's flow. Mm. You know, I go in like, man, I'm just knocking them down. Clients are <laughs> responding, this is yeah. awesome. That's when you've got it. So if you don't have that zen kind of flow feeling going on at work on a regular basis, um, and look, everybody has a bad day, but if it's every day, it looks like, well, don't, go get a job, right? I mean, <laughs> if you got flow going on, you're in the right place. So I think it's about refining your business model and your offer until you got that flow. It feels right. It feels good. Clients are responding. You're jazzed. Yeah. That's when you got it. That's when you got it right. If it, to the extent it doesn't look like that, yeah, time to rethink. That's the goal. Getting into the flow state. Totally. Thanks so much for coming on the show with us, Jim. Where can people get the book and more information about you? Yeah, uh, you go to Amazon and you can grab a copy of Great CEOs or Lazy. Um, you can find more about what we do with uh, CEOs and our CEO peer groups at IncCEOProject.com. Awesome, Jim. Pleasure having you on the show. Thanks, Mark. I'm Mark Lack. This is Business Rockstars, connecting a community of entrepreneurs. You can join us on Facebook, Twitter, and online at BusinessRockstars.com.